Hi and welcome to the Inquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and in this video I'm going to show you how I turn the Proxon FET miniature table saw into a very consistent fret slotting saw. If you are just like me and you don't like cutting fret slots by hand, especially in ebony fretboards which can be very tedious to do by hand, Converting a miniature table saw into a fret slotting machine might be just what you need in your workshop. The main thing we're going to need to make a fret slotting machine out of a table saw is a cross cut sled. And there are many tutorials already online on how to make one of these. But here's my shortened version and I show you how to use it to cut your fretboards. Keep in mind this is a prototype and I use some scraps I had laying around and if it turns out okay I might make it a little bit more fancy and a bit more polished. First I plane down a piece of lumber for the runners of the crosscut sled and I make sure it runs smoothly through the tracks in the table of the table saw without too much play. You don't want them to fit too tight so the jig gets hard to slide later on. Next I mark the height of the runners with a pencil and I use the table saw to cut them to the correct height. Be careful, although this is a miniature table saw, this still isn't a toy and can take off a large chunk of your fingers with ease. With the runners cut and planed to the correct width and height, I insert a couple of tin washers into the table saw tracks to raise the top of the runners ever so slightly above the table to help me install the base of the sled. For the base of my sled I use a 6mm thick multiply board which I've cut to the same dimensions as the aluminum table on the saw. I align the base to the table using the side guide on the Proxon table saw which unfortunately is just out of frame. I temporarily fix the base to the runners with a couple drops of super glue before fixing the base to the runners with some wood screws. Keep in mind we're going to be using saw blades with a small diameter and they have a very limited cutting depth. So don't use a board any thicker than about 6 mils. I keep checking if the sled still slides easily across the table. With the base fixed to the runners, I can cut them to length and remove any sharp edges. Next I plane two other scrap pieces of lumber to be perfectly square and flat with the table on the table saw. And I make sure one of these two pieces of wood has an absolutely flat and straight face. And these two blocks are going to be my end block and my main guide. I position my end block on the far edge of the sled perpendicular to the runners and fix it in place with a couple of wood screws. As this is a prototype I don't make it too fancy or use any glue just in case I need to make some changes later on. I keep checking that the sled is nice and smooth on the bottom and it's running smoothly on the table saw. I've installed the saw blade I'm going to use to cut my fret slots and more on saw blades later on in this video and I'm trying to adjust it as square as possible to the table. But unfortunately the way the blade angle is adjusted on the Proxon FET table saw isn't the most optimal way of doing things. But with the blade finally squared up it's time to make a zero clearance insert for this blade. Luckily there is a blank insert provided with the Proxon table saw and the only thing I need to do is to install it and gently raise the spinning blade all the way through.
and I use a card scraper to remove the burr left by the blade and clean up the insert. With the zero clearance insert done, I can continue with the jig by cutting through the slat almost all the way to the end. I use a square and a ruler to position the main guide for this jig. The main guide has to be as close to perpendicular to the saw blade as possible. Make sure the flattened and straight face of the guide is facing inward. I had mine on backwards the first try. And then fix it in place with a couple of wood screws. Here I made a mistake and I was glad I hadn't used any glue. At first I positioned the guide at the edge of the slab, but when testing the jig I realized it had to be placed about 6 to 10 centimeters from the edge, which I fixed off camera as you can see later in the video. With the guide in place I finished the cut all the way through the base of the slab. Another mistake was trying to use a small guide pin to position the fret slot template. It seemed to be perfect, but I forgot to account for the fretboard thickness and the limited thickness on the base of the sled made the guide pin come loose very quickly. So when I repositioned the guide on the sled, I also cut a slot in it in which I can insert an aluminum guide bar to hold the template in place. A much better and sturdier solution, one I can also remove if I want to use the jig as a regular cross-cut sled on the table saw. Now with my first prototype of my fret slotting jig or table saw cross-cut uh, sled done, uh, it's time to talk about the saw blades you can get for the Proxon FET table saw and the one I recommend to cut your fret slots with. There are a variety of saw blades available for the Proxon FET table saw and although some seem very similar there are some distinct differences which are good to know before you buy any of these to cut your fretboards. First of all we have the general purpose saw blade that comes with the machine. It's an 80 mm diameter saw blade with a curve of 1.6 mm and 36 teeth. Although this is a very yeah, good quality saw blade for general purpose uh, cutting on your table saw, of course this isn't suitable to cut your fret slots with because the cut it makes is far too wide for the tang of your frets. Next I'm going to talk about are these two saw blades, the so-called super cut saw blades. And although on paper they look suitable to cut your fret slots with, um, they're actually not. On the blade itself and on the packaging it says it has a curve of a half a millimeter which would be perfect for the tanks of your frets. But these blades have set teeth so the blade itself so the material of the blade is indeed half a millimeter thick but due to the set of the teeth which are alternating uh, from left to right so to say uh, it gives a slightly wider cut uh, almost two millimeter uh, almost a full millimeter uh, wide curve when you cut with it so these are very good blades to do again uh, general cuts in wood it gives a very clean cut due to the shape of the teeth and the yeah very thin blade. These two aren't suitable for uh, cutting your fret slots either. There are two I recommend for cutting your fret slots. So let's focus on these two blades. Although they look very similar there is uh, some differences between these two blades. They both are a 50 millimeter diameter blade with of course the 10 millimeter hole to fit the axle of the FET table saw but they have a big difference in material. This little blade and it's the number 28020 um, is just a hardened steel circular saw blade. It's just an HSS blade where the other blade is a tungsten carbide steel so a much better quality blade, much better quality um, material on this blade. This blade has a curve of 0.56 millimeters, so just over half a millimeter, 
but the teeth are slightly set giving it just a tiny bit wider cut almost 0.6 millimeters which is yeah almost too wide for your fret tang it will work um, but it's on the wider side and you might have to glue in your frets also this blade has a hundred teeth a hundred tiny teeth so it's more prone to getting clogged uh, when cutting your fret slots the carbon uh, the tungsten carbide blade however has only 80 teeth and no set on the teeth giving it an exact uh, curve of 0.55 millimeters which is perfect for most fret wire it has only 80 teeth so it's less prone to getting clogged and the test cuts I did with this blade were absolutely perfect there is a big difference in price however while this uh, blade the 28020 is just under 10 euros here in the Netherlands at the moment this blade is almost three times as expensive it was just over uh, 30 euros I believe uh, but yeah I think it's well worth it it, it will last you a lot longer uh, than the cheaper one and it gives you a better cut for your fret slot so I recommend getting the number 28011 uh, blade for your proxen saw if you like to make your own fret slotting jig with a proxen FET table saw So to actually cut the fret slots in the fretboard I'm going to use a fret slotting template I've got mine from TLC Guitar Goods and I'm going to first attach the fretboard to the template using masking tape and super glue So everything is set up and ready to go. The fretboard is stuck to the template. I've got my jig in place and I've got the saw blade protruding from the jig about three millimeters. So this should give me a nice uh, fret slot three millimeters deep. So yeah, I can just place my template against the fence using this piece of aluminum as a notch for the template and start cutting the fret slots. And I can already tell this is a whole lot easier than doing it by hand. Let's check the slots. Yeah, perfect fret slots. Let's do them all. Yeah, already done. It just took me a couple of minutes to cut all these fret slots and I used to hate cutting fret slots but yeah, this makes it so easy. It's well worth the effort and the money to invest in such a machine and make a little jig uh, when you intend to make more than one guitar. So let's also try to cut the fret slots in this ebony fretboard ebony is usually a bit tougher to cut so let's see how she goes
And yeah, also ebony works perfectly. Nicely cut fret slots. Now all I have to do is remove the two ends on either side of the fretboard and I've got a lovely fretboard ready to be glued on to a guitar neck. And here you have it, a quick little video on making a fret slotting machine from a Proxen FET miniature table saw and yeah, I'm very pleased it had no problems at all. Uh, with cutting fret slots in both a rosewood uh, fretboard blank and an ebony one and yeah It saved me a lot of time. So it's well worth spending the effort and the money on getting this jig and this machine and I can do Several fretboards now in the same time. It took me to do a single one by hand and yeah their fret slots are more consistent even depth and yeah without any effort so if you got some useful information or you like this video uh, let me know in the comment section down below and of course by hitting that like button if you're new to my channel and you happen to like what you've seen yeah please consider subscribing and hitting that little notification bell so you get notified when i upload something new and you don't has, have to miss out on any of my uploads so yeah that's it for this week's video i hope you liked it and i hope to see you all in the next one but until then have a nice week